virtually welcome. All right, so hello and welcome if you're just joining us for our teacher workshop for the American Buffalo film. Um, many of you are in the chat box. I see 76 attendees at this time. If you are just joining and you're thinking, gosh, I can't see, turn my camera on and I can't turn my microphone on, that is because we are in webinar mode. Um, all attendees can just listen and watch. Um, so take a break. You aren't expected to talk during this workshop. We're going to do the talking and the presenting for you, and you can just sit back and enjoy. We are recording this webinar because we had such interest, but many people could not make it and wanted to be able to see it for later. So we will be recording it and sharing it tomorrow. Uh, we had 320 teachers register for this opportunity, which has broken a record here at Montana PBS for registration for teacher workshops. We've been doing these for a couple of years and we've never had that much interest in a workshop. So I think it's having Mike Jetty and Zach Hawkins mm -hmm. as the top billing for the workshop. Um, but it could also be the Ken Burns film. <laughs> so if you're just joining, um, start by Tell, introducing yourself in the chat box. That is how you can interact with us today. Make sure that you choose everyone. It's fine if you choose hosts and panelists, but then those of us on the screen are the only ones who can see your comment. If you choose everyone, then everyone can see that. Tell us your name, your role, and your school, and your location. And does it look like fall or winter or a little of both where you are? I'm in Bozeman, Montana. And I can see sunshine and leaves on the grass, but I can also see piles of snow from our most recent snowstorm that we had last week. <laughs> I'll You will see some other names leaving messages in the chat box. My team of graduate and undergraduate students are here with me today helping manage the chat box. Um, they'll be sharing links and answering questions and making sure that um, people get the information that they need when they have it. And then I'm also excited to introduce two gentlemen from OPI who have graciously offered to share with us today, uh, Mike Jetty and Zach Hawkins. Do you wanna both just say hello real quick? Sure, I'll start out uh, Zach Hawkins, uh, Indian Ed for All Director at OPI and uh, just a shout out to some of the folks I've seen here in the chat, Amy and uh, up in Browning. I've seen some folks in Whitefish and Eureka, both places I used to live. So thanks for being here. <laughs> Too much winter I see in the chat box. <laughs> it's only <laughs> October. <laughs> well, well, how Mitaki Api. Uh, hello, my relatives, uh, Mike Jetty, uh, member, of the, member of the Spirit Lake Dakota Nation and a Turtle Mountain Anishinaabe descendant. And, Happy to be here with you today. I work with Indian Education for All with Zach and um, just honored to be a part of this, uh, you know, webinar and uh, to share this powerful film. And so um, to begin, I was talking to Nikki about a, a good way to start. And in Dakota, there's an old phrase, it's mitakuyasi. Mitakuyasi means everything is connected. We are all related. <clears throat> and in this film, you can really see those connections with the what we call the Te Oyate, the Buffalo Nation. And so to start out, I thought I'd offer up a prayer, a prayer song for the Buffalo. And uh, especially if you're reading the papers right now, what's happening in Bozeman with Yellowstone Park in the state of Montana, I really offer up prayers for folks in those meetings so they can do best for what's good for our relatives, the Buffalo. And, uh, you know, really, you know, take that to heart. And, you know, so maybe this film will impact some people's thinking, you know, at the state level to adjust their attitude regarding bison. And so I offer up this song for all those tribal folks that are working to reintroduce bison for those sacred, spiritual, cultural, historic connections. And so this is a ceremony song. And so I thought I would I'd tell Nikki, I was like, well, people often ask, what are you singing? And so this is the the words to this prayer song. And so I'll offer this up for the spirit of our, you know, our Buffalo Nation here, so. Hey, 
I offer up that prayer for the Buffalo Nation and thanks to all of you for being here. So with that, turn it back over to you, Nikki. Thank you, Mike. That was great. I love that. Such a good song. So thanks everybody for being here. I don't think I introduced myself. I just assumed everyone knew who I was, but that was really very presumptuous given that there are 124 of you now on the Zoom. My name is Nikki Bradenberg and I'm the Director of Education here at Montana PBS. I get the pleasure of bringing PBS media into classrooms across the state of Montana in a lot of ways, um, whether it's workshops like this or on our free website for teachers, PBS Learning Media that we'll be sharing a little bit later. Um, and also out in the community at our events that we do in person. I am a former classroom teacher. I taught for 16 years at a little rural school just outside of Bozeman. I taught mostly in the primary grade levels, K through second grade. Um, and I got the opportunity to step into this role almost seven years ago now. Um, and it's just my dream job every single day. You'll see that we have some other great Montana PBS people putting links in the chat box. Merritt, Ruby, and Lex are here uh, with me, helping me manage the chat box and sharing links with you. We've been doing virtual workshops for teachers in the area of youth mental illness, technology integration, and media literacy. This is the first workshop we've done in partnership with OPI and IEFA, and I hope it will just be the first of many because there's obviously great interest um, from teachers to learn about these materials and films from PBS around this topic. So um, for those of you who maybe just joined, we are recording this. If you are wondering why you can't get your camera to work or why you don't have audio, we are in webinar mode. Um, that means that participants don't um, have camera access and they don't have microphone access. So you just get to sit back, relax and listen. And if you have a question for us, just go ahead and put that in the chat box. And my team and Mike and Zach and I will try to get, the, get to those as quickly as possible. This is what we're gonna be work doing today. Um, the first order of business will be watching a short clip from the film, which is a compilation of both episodes and give you a nice little taste of what the documentary is about. And then most of it will be sharing resources from OPI that you can use in your classroom to bring the buffalo to life for your students. The first order of business, though, is to sign in. My team is putting the link to a Google form in the chat box. This is the most important thing you need to do, which is to fill out this Google form because tomorrow I will go through the, all the addresses on this form and I will email the OPI certificate to you for your participation in for this workshop. It's the only way I can think of to make sure that everybody is here gets credit for doing this. So make sure that you sign in. You're gonna see that link show up in the chat box a whole bunch of times. My team is even going to be checking the spreadsheet to make sure that our number of uh, attendees matches the number on the spreadsheet. It's also the only way that you will get entered into the prize drawing. At the end today, we're going to send 15 people uh, a, a lesson kit, uh, including one of the movie posters that you see behind me, um, a DVD, and we have a collection of picture books, a different assorted collection of picture books and different kinds of books um, for using teaching about the buffalo in your classroom, including this one by the writer of the film Blood Memory by author Dayton Duncan. There'll be a, a mixture of books. I can't say who's going to get what because some of them haven't even arrived yet. We've ordered them from Birch Bark Books in Minnesota. Um, and so as they come in, our team will be assembling them. DVDs are not available in until December, so you'll get to wait for mail, um, but we will do a drawing to give everybody access to those prizes. So right now I'm gonna introduce the film and set up the clips, and you can just sit back and relax. The American Buffalo is a four hour documentary in two parts. 
directed by Ken Burns um, and written by Dayton Duncan. And it explores more than 10,000 years of North American history across some of the continent's most iconic landscapes, including Montana. You're gonna see a lot of Montana in this film. It traces the Buffalo's evolution, its significance to indigenous people and the Great Plains, its near extinction, and the efforts to bring these mammals back from the brink. This film was produced in partnership with people right here in Montana. Um, and Mike, I'll help you with the pronunciation. You'll have to help me with the pronunciation for some of the names, but I wanted to just to give a shout out to a uh, script advisor, Rosalind LaPierre, who is an environmental historian from the Blackfoot, Montana, Gerard Baker, who is a Mandan Hidatsa, retired park superintendent, and Jason Baldes, the tribal bison coordinator for the National Wildlife Federation and vice president of the Intertribal Buffalo Council. So it's hard to always get these films right, um, but Ken Burns worked with trusted advisors and experts to try and tell as many aspects of the story that he could. It took four years to produce this documentary and they did it during the pandemic, just as they started, everything shut down and many of their interviews um, had to be done by Zoom or on the phone. Um, and they didn't get access to some of the elders that they wanted to because of the pandemic, um, but they did the best they could. When working with filmmakers, I know that there's, there's, there's never an end point to the story. There's a, we have to be done so we can get this in front of audiences. So there are certainly more stories they could have told and more perspectives they could have included. Um, and you'll get a nice little, um, get a nice little taste of that as I watch this clip. And then I'll share our resources for teachers. So I'm gonna stop right now in the sharing. I do have to pause the recording um, before I share the clip because I'm not allowed to record the clip playing. It's a, a licensing and rights thing. So I'm gonna pause the recording right now and I'll rely on my team to help me remember to unpause it. <laughs> Thank you. I'll hit my slideshow now. And so what you may be wondering is how can I use this with my students? How can I use this with the in the classroom? Obviously a four hour documentary is a lot to show in a classroom. We would love for you to watch it and get use it to build your own context and build your own knowledge about the topic. Um, but then PBS Learning Media has created this nice collection for you using clips from the film and then uh, developing support materials, classroom resources that are available for you to you for free. Um, Ruby is sharing it there in the chat box so you can check it out. Um, they have taken the film and cut it up into topics and themes. So there are three video clips uh, that cover native identity and culture, conservation and ecology, and policy and le legislation. So you can watch this film in a series of clips with your students. Um, and then as you cl click on each tile, you'll see this one is a media gallery. So it actually has several different clips from the film featured there. And if you scroll down, you'll see there are teaching tips with suggestions about what you can use to discuss the film, as well as some discussion questions that you might uh, pose to students as you're sharing the film. Um, these are authored by members of Native American communities, as well as high school teachers uh, from across the United States. So you can trust this is content with SPIN, uh, follows all of our PBS practices and guidelines, and also um, attempts to meet the content needs of teachers. It's also aligned to standards, including our Montana Office of Public Instruction standards um, for grades six through eight, nine through 12, and the nationwide standards for um, science and literacy. So you can see all of those things here. And this is all part of the Ken Burns in the Classroom collection. If you are a Ken Burns fan, you can access all of the materials that go with his documentaries here on PBS Learning Media in his collection. Um, because again, he's known for his very long documentaries. It's much more palatable for a student if we break them up into clips and uh, add support materials to go with them. 
In addition to our resources on PBS Learning Media, the engagement team has created some fun coloring sheets that you can download if you click on these slides. There's an adult coloring sheet and a kid's coloring sheet that you could download and just enjoy with your family or with the students in your class. Ruby will be sharing the links to those in the chat box as well. And then the big question I'm sure everybody has is how can I watch the whole film? And so we are offering, this film can be streamed for free online right now until November 30th. Um, after November 30th, it is no longer available for free streaming. Um, and so Montana PBS is offering credit OPI credit for teachers who watch the film and complete a reflection activity, which is a Google form with questions that have you think a little bit deeply about the film and share your insights. You can get five OPI credits for watching the whole film and completing the reflection activity. You can do that by clicking on earn credit for watching or scan the QR code right there. You will go to this site here, which is the official American Buffalo website, where you can watch the full film for free. And remember, it is two episodes. There's also a companion film, which is an online film um, called Homecoming, which is just about 18 and a half minutes long. And it features some of the buffaloes being brought buffalo being brought back to tribal land and it tells the story of Jason Baldas from the Wind River Indian Reservation and his work with the intertribal buffalo um, community. He's also got some more information on this page about getting the DVD um, and as well as the classroom resources are there as well. So if you want to watch this film for credit go ahead and sign our form and wait for an email coming from me Again, we'll have this available to you for the month of November. And now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna turn it over to the real talent of the hour, Zach and Mike from OPI. And they're gonna, we're so lucky that we have local Montana teaching resources to go along with this film that existed before this film was ever an idea in Ken Burns idea or book of ideas. So take it away, Zach and Mike, please share. Sure. Um, well, thank you, Nikki, you know, for giving that that great overview there and just the synopsis, the clips are really powerful. Um, you know, and thinking of those buffalo head nickels, this summer I ran into a guy in Butte, Montana that had a necklace with five of those nickels on there. And I said, hey, what's the story behind your necklace? He said, I'm trying to be a quarter Indian. So there, there's your bad buffalo joke to start us out with. But, you know, um, Zach, do you want to kick it off with a little comment about the Constitution and EFA? Um, yeah, so of course here in Montana, uh, we are very unique in that it's in our Constitution that uh, we all, as Montana citizens, uh, need to learn about the unique uh, culture uh, and heritage about our tribes. And, um, you know, I think, I think in relation to Buffalo, I think that, you know, just that understanding of how important, uh, you know, the, the buffalo, the bison uh, was and is today to Montana tribes. And, uh, you know, we see a lot of, uh, you know, revitalization efforts, a lot of things going on on reservations with their own herds. And uh, I think that's really encouraging. But I think one of the key components of, of really having, uh, you know, an understanding of who Montana tribes were and are today is, is really understanding that connection with the buffalo. It is a very powerful and profound connection. And so uh, we're just going to share some resources on how you can, you know, incorporate, you know, teaching about Buffalo in a uh, culturally responsive manner in your curriculum. And, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about Indian education for all funding right now. And, and buying this film for your school would be a great use of your Indian ed for all money. And so uh, consider doing that, you know, getting a copy for your school library. We highly encourage you to do that. So, um, so we think about the essential understandings regarding Montana Indians. Um, bison restoration fits in with all of them, all seven of them. But really thinking about, um, you know, essential understanding three, talking about ceremony, spirituality, traditions. And I think that's powerful. You know, we often talk about, you know, Native peoples in the past. 
but looking at you know contemporary issues regarding buffalo um there's there's some really interesting parallels with what happened with uh you know buffalo in the united states and extermination and efforts with what happened with native people and almost being exterminated but you know Florence McGeeziek says that in uh, one of our video clips that we use on our website, you know, it's like Buffalo are almost annihilated. They're making a comeback, just like American Indians are making a comeback. So it goes hand in hand. This uh, resurgence of traditions with Buffalo and bison is, is all part of healing. And uh, this, this image on here is actually a picture of a petrified Buffalo skull that is thousands of years old. But one of my friends had this you know, he found it and uh, he used it as sweat lodge for his altar. And so, you know, very ancient, but still being used today in a contemporary spiritual context. So um, to me, that's just this, this cultural continuity, maintaining these connections. So um, anything that else to add to that one, Zach? Um, not really. Yeah. Just again, understanding that importance and that cultural continuity and the, and the comeback, um, you know, there's a great, um, uh, great project happening up in Poplar um, with some teachers up there and they do an annual uh, bison harvest and they they started out working with Maps Media Institute but now they have their own uh, film company that's local there that they work with to document that um, and uh, I can share really quick too about I guess it was in 2019 before COVID um, you know I got to go up to uh, to Harlem Montana uh, Fort Belknap there uh, for um, for the American Indian Heritage Days, which for them was a whole week, and um, they do all kinds of stuff around bison and just just seeing those kids out there, um, you know, like uh, their traditional roles of skinning and stretching the hide, and you know all the different things associated with that, um, and seeing in my case former students who I taught when I taught in Hayes that were leading that was was really cool and uh, just again feeds that narrative of. Uh, this important revitalization and EU3. Yeah. And I put, you know, yeah, Dakota word for Buffalo Nation, Te Oyate, you know, the Buffalo Nation. You probably heard the word Tatanka, but Te is, uh, you know, a different way to, to look at all the bison, all the buffalo from a, a Dakota cultural perspective. So every tribe that interacted with bison and had that connection has their own names. And so that's something to consider looking at too is, you know, what, do different tribes call bison? Um, and thinking about bison, do you know why you never see a buffalo hiding in a tree? Because they're really, really good at it. So uh, here, here are the words to that song again. And I think, you know, I just put this back up there to reaffirm, you know, that, that sacred cultural, you know, deep spiritual connection, that relationship that tribes have to these animals. And it's, it's not just something you use. It's, there's this deep spiritual connection weaved into oral traditions, origin stories for a lot of different tribes, star stories. And so, you know, if you really dig into this, this animal and its connections to Native people, you can really go deep with all of our essential understandings. And if you look at the tribal seals from several of our tribal nations, they feature bison on them. And so that's one of the resources on our Indian Education for All website is a resource, you know, learning about the tribal seals. These seals reflect sovereign nations, but then there are also powerful symbols of tribes' culture and identity, ceremony. And uh, you can really see, you know, bison, you know, are central to a lot of these, you know, these tribal seals. Like the Fort Belknap tribal seal, their bison is two different colors to represent the two different tribes up on that reservation. Uh, Fort Peck's got an interesting tribal seal. Um, theirs was created in the 1980s um, after they mapped out their waterways on the reservation. They discovered that they actually formed the outline of a buffalo. And so they created that tribal seal to reflect that, you know, the waterways on their reservation, which is really cool. And the Little Shell Chippewa, um, have the, the bison on their seal, and they have a unique story. Uh, they became the 574th federally recognized tribe. And way to go, Little Shell. But um, I love their tribal seal. It's got the bison on there facing west to symbolize their migration. But um, we talk about Indian education for all um, not being an either or. It's a both and more. 
And uh, you can integrate bison as a both and more, you know, to incorporate multiple perspectives. But I really like the little shell in their tribal seal. They acknowledge their indigenous ancestry by that eagle staff and their European ancestry. So it doesn't have to be that either or. And so I, I really like that, that tribal seal. And so little shell, you know, also refer to themselves as Métis. And so if you ever happen to see a group of little shell people floating down the Missouri River, you can say, Ohoy Métis. No, oh, another bad joke for you there. Um, but here, here's one of our science standards, and that's some of the work that Zach and I do and other staff here at OPI is we work to indigenize our school systems. And so if you look at our standards for science, for math, for language arts, there'll be references to American Indians, either content or context. And I think this is a powerful science one. And you think about, you know, the hundreds of uses that came out of Buffalo. And if you think about that clip in a video, um, just taking the hide and tongue and leaving everything else. But look, you know, look how much was used. Here's, here's another image. Um, and this is, I think this image is featured in one of our resources uh, that was done by Project Archaeology and a bunch of other uh, groups that worked on that, the 10,000 year uh, significance of the bison. But, you know, just look at that list. But then you can bring in the science component to this and, you know, what was it used for and, you know, what were the medicinal properties or, you know, whatever. I think there's there's a lot of science there, but then the culture and history. So any anything else to add to this slide, Zach, as I'm kind of talking here? Yeah, well, I was going to back up back to your bad buffalo hiding in a tree joke, but um. so, yeah, you know, just, uh, just a couple of weeks ago after uh, MFPE, my family and I were, we came through Yellowstone. We got through just, it was beautiful right before all the snow hit us here. But, um, you know, so uh, we were walking in on this little trail and we kept running into people coming out and they said, Hey, did you see that big Buffalo back there? And we said, no, they must've moved away, moved off into the woods or something. We didn't see it, but so then my wife and my youngest turned around and me and my oldest did this other loop and met them back at the highway. And they, when they were walking back to the truck, uh, they've stopped and they're looking around and all of a sudden they saw this buffalo like in this little clump of trees like about 20 yards away and they were a little alarmed you know because it was so close and so uh then when we met him back at the truck my my youngest son said you know that that buffalo joke mike jetty always tells he said that buffalo was hiding pretty good there's some truth to that so <laughs> there you go um there's a little buffalo story for you but uh yeah i mean this is this stuff is great and uh you know, it's it's a great opportunity uh, when you think about the science behind it, and uh, you know, you know the chemistry behind tanning, and um, you know the nutrition, with, you know the, the protein component of, of bison meat versus other types of meat, and you know all that stuff. There's a lot of great learning that can happen uh, with your students around around this stuff, natural science, and and uh, buffalo. Yeah, and then. So a little more of the history, you know, that was part of the film, you know, millions and millions of bison. And you just look at that map, they're everywhere. And now something, you know, that I don't think about, you know, when I was watching the film a couple of weeks ago is, you know, be, bus, bison being on the East Coast, you know, it's not in my, you know, thought, but they were, you know, thousands of years ago and, you know, hundreds of years ago, but because of what happened, we just think of them being out in the West, but they're all over the place. And, but you know, what happened? You know, here's this image that you've probably seen, but you know, almost hunted to extinction. And, you know, just look at those skulls there. I mean, that, you know, you could use visual thinking strategies with your students on an image like this. You know, what is this image? What's happening in this image? You know, you could have do some math if you want. And how many bison skulls would it actually take to make something that big? I mean, that is a a very profound. Um, it's it's a very emotional issue, uh, you know. When I look at this image here, but yet um, I think for me, the the power of this, you know, is is there's this history, real tragic history, and stuff still is going on that we still need to work through. But now we're we're having, you know, tribes doing bison restoration. 
you know, getting buffalo back back on reservations, you know, restoring herds, like what Zach was talking about there up in Harlem, up at Fort Belknap, up at Fort Peck. You know, they're they're you know bringing back uh, traditions. You know, in, in exposing students in the community to this, and it's bringing people together. And I think that's really powerful. It's all part of that healing. Um, so here are a few of our resources that we have at the Office of Public Instruction for bison. Uh, we have a hub course. That's a free class. Uh, if you want to learn about bison restoration and tribal sovereignty, I encourage you to check that out. Um, it's about a four-hour class, um, but really good films that are embedded in there. You can learn about what's happening up at Fort Peck and Fort Belknap and with different tribes. But then we also have a, a remote learning lesson plan that's designed for students, um, a kind of a plug and play le lesson plan. Um, but one of the videos that's featured in that lesson plan is all about uh, the National Bison Range up on the Flathead Reservation. There's a really cool film on the spirit of Atatiche. And uh, if you haven't seen that, I encourage you to check out that movie. It's about 18 minutes long, but it's a really well done documentary about the National Bison Range. But then we have star stories. Uh, we have a really cool crow star story called The Seven Stars that has a really cool buffalo connection to it. And then a few years ago during the pandemic, Zach and I got to go to the Madison Buffalo Jump and we um, interviewed Dr. Shane Doyle there. Um, anything to add to that, Zach, about that experience? Uh, well, it was just, it was, it was cool to, uh, to be there and, and see, you know, the, the old teepee rings and then, the you know, the drive lines and, and things, you know, and just, just thinking about the fact that, you know, for thousands of years, um, that was going on and there were periods in time where right where we were standing, there would have been, you know, hundreds or thousands of Buffalo, you know, charging through there. And, um, you know, so that's something I think that's important too, you know, like Mike said, uh, you know, there used to be bison all the way on the East Coast. So um, when we, we talk about land acknowledgements and we talk about the indigenous history of our country, um, that's a great thing to think about and remember is, um, you know, the bison were here for thousands of years and probably wherever we are, uh, there were there were buffalo there at some point. So um, that's, a, you know, that's a cool thing. And we want people to kind of understand that the, the importance and, the, and the, you know, really the how cool that is. Um, you know, that we, we had uh, such a great history of bison here in, in Montana and all over. And then I was just going to share, you know, um, you know, there's a, in, in my job, I've, you know, occasionally get these bits of indigenous wisdom and talking to people. And, and uh, you know, one of the analogies that I've heard a lot is, uh, you know, when, when there's a really heavy duty storm or, you know, there's bad weather with the buffalo, they turn their head into it. And uh, they walk into it. They don't. They don't hunker down and go away from it. And so, we use that often here as an analogy for just for for life and for challenges in work or, you know, whatever we're going through. And when times are hard, you know, we just face it head on. So uh, that's another little little nugget I wanted to throw in there. Yeah, a lot of lessons we can learn from Buffalo. And there's a DVD in your school library that OPI sent out to every school. It's a film called Facing the Storm. And that's a really uh, close look at what's happening at Yellowstone Park. And that's part of this unit we did here in this Fort Peck Place Names unit is a, a connection to what's happening with Yellowstone Bison where you really take a look at this thing called bursalosis and the science behind it. And then what's happening at Yellowstone Park even today, you know, they're having meetings that got contentious between the state of Montana and the park. And, you know, I really pray for healing and uh, you know, really focusing on that that animal and the spirit of that animal and that connection, but that's still happening today. So we think about bison slaughters being happening a long time ago. Well, um, they they still go on, and it's sad they do. But I'm so thankful that some of those bison do get transferred to tribes. And to me, I think that that's powerful. And I wish we could do more of that. And maybe you know, those folks will figure out a way to do that. But, you know, so there's this really great resource called the 10,000 year significance of the bison and Nikki will send out links to all these. And so you can check them out. These resources, really good resources. Um, just for thinking about bison. And uh, this this was a really powerful poem that students in Livingston, Montana wrote after they did this Buffalo unit. And so I'll just uh, I'll just read this to you because I think it's so powerful. 
bison, bison. Bison are big and strong. 1,000 years ago, they did nothing wrong. Powerful heads like snow plows. Now they compete with cows. Once people started the slaughter, the issue began to get hotter. If we begin to restore, bison will roam once more. Some people want to haze, but others want to raise. So when buffalo are free to graze, then a new generation can praise. Me, I really love this poem because it just shows the impact of Indian Ed for All in the classroom on what students are thinking about in regards to, you know, topics like bison and buffalo rest restoration. And, you know, down there in Paradise Valley, I'm sure they're, they're well aware of some of the issues, you know, with going on in Yellowstone Park. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the sharing and, uh, you know, kind of open it up for some questions now. And so before we do that, though, I'll just, I'll just share this with you. Um, a long time ago, there was this Dakota elder being interviewed by a newspaper reporter. And this reporter asked him all kinds of questions. And at the end of the interview, he said, uh, so do you Indians still eat buffalo? And the old guy thought about it and he said, only the wings. So, so there's, a, there's a bad buffalo wings joke for you. But um, any questions? We've only got a few more minutes left, but uh, you know, great film, lesson plans to go along with it. We've got a lot of good curriculum resources on our website at OPI to support you know, teaching about bison and bison restoration. So a really powerful topic. And it ties back into that, I think, healing. There's a lot of healing going on in, in Indian country. And, and maybe this, this film can help heal us as a country. You know, we can learn some lessons from bison and that, that sacred relationship. So um, any, anybody have any, uh, any questions or comments, I guess, that are out there? There's been a lot of things coming up in the chat box. Um, there's one that came into the Q&A. I don't know if you can see that one. Um, while people are asking questions, I'm going to put this up here. The last slide today, we need people to fill out our survey. Um, we did get a grant to put on these workshops, and so we have to show that we did right by our grantor by having you fill out this event survey. So, and our, my team will be posting that link in the chat box as well. Um, I've chosen 15 random names from the uh, attendance sheet. So if you had your name on the attendance sheet, um, your random, my random name picker chose these people to get our lesson kits. Rod Benson, Kristen Bickford, Sarah Elliott, Denise Rutledge, Rab, Dana Bremer, Brian Wilcutt, Rachel LeVere, Judy Hardestay, Valerie Pateman, Caroline Long, Catherine Burgess, Vanessa Garfield, Marsha Hamm, and Katie Knight. So I, those were 15 names. You will be getting some mail probably in December. Um, so watch your mailbox for that one. Mike, Zach, did you see any of these questions? I, I saw a question. I saw a question come up about uh, bison being labeled as domestic or wild. Mm -hmm. And that was an interesting issue about the state of Montana wanting to label them as domestic so they could be managed differently and uh, versus being, you know, wild. And so that's some of the stuff that's, that's happening. So whoever wrote that, reach out to me, send me an email and I can give you some more background information on that. And I think some of that might be covered in a few of our Indian Ed for All resources. So, um, yeah, so, you know, just subtle things like that can have a profound impact on the management. And mm -hmm. and so, you know, just keep those kind of things in mind, too, you know, just how we, uh, you know, manage resources. Um, I was going to share just to piggyback on that because I saw that comment as well, Mike. Uh, so years ago, I used to do the Upward Bound program and worked with kids uh, from around Helena, Butte, Anaconda. Um, and uh, we did a summer program and and one time our program, we'd have kind of a theme and it was kind of around Montana history. And so we had a, we had like a week of the Buffalo, which was just our indigenous history and stuff in Montana. But anyway, as part of that, we went to the, the uh, Turner Bison Ranch down in the Ruby Valley and uh, got to have Buffalo burgers for lunch. And then um, actually we got to go out uh, in the herd and they, you know, they had a little feed pellet fit truck and they threw a bunch of pellets out and then we just got to sit there and, and kind of just listen to these bison as they came through and grazed. And that was, that was pretty cool. Cause it was like this little snapshot into 
um, you know, what, what that world would have been like, you know, 500 years ago or whatever. But, um, but I remember the, the ranch manager just talking about, it. he goes, you know, the great thing about this is like everything they needs right here. You know, we don't need to, we don't need to grow a bunch of hay. We don't need to, you know, because they're the, they're the native species here. So just back to that land management question about, you know, bison there. I mean, they've been here for thousands of years. They're, they're suited for this landscape that we live on. Yeah, there's a really cool program called the Buffalo Nation Food System Initiative. You know how bison restoration is connected to food sovereignty. And so a lot of resources are be developed by, by different groups. And so um, we'll make sure we link to those groups on our Indian Ed for All website because they are producing a lot of uh, culturally relevant teaching materials to help you, you know, integrate teaching about bison into your classroom. So um, I'll just share this last thing with you. Do you know what the difference is between a herd of lawyers and a herd of buffalo? <laughs> the lawyers charge more. So, yes. <laughs> But, you know, I'm thankful that you, Nikki, to give us the opportunity to share a little bit about some of our resources for Indian Ed for All and then sharing this powerful film, because I think it I think it will, you know, uh, change people's perceptions and maybe open up their hearts and minds. And maybe what we're doing down there in Yellowstone, folks might rethink some of their kind of hardline positions. And, yeah, I hope so. Uh, so. I thank you for that. We're here to start conversations. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You it was great to be here. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, look for an email from me tomorrow with OPI certificates, links to everything that we shared here today, including the survey, if you didn't get a chance to fill that out. Thank you for helping us break teacher workshop virtual records uh, by having 150 teachers on this workshop at one point. So it's it's really cool to see. So until next time, have a good evening, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye.